Hi, welcome to Advanced English with Steve UK, and of course, I'm Steve. Now, this video is about the importance of using fixed expressions. What are fixed expressions? Well, I'm going to explain in a moment. Now, those of you who've watched my previous videos will know that I'm very keen on using lexical chunks. Now, lexical chunks include collocations, phrasal verbs, and idioms. They also include fixed expressions. And by fixed expressions, I don't mean idioms. I mean fixed, non-idiomatic expressions. They're extremely important. I won't say any more because I'm going to pass over to my colleague Rosie to present. Remember to subscribe and then you'll be able to watch future videos. Okay, I'll be back soon. Until then, over to Rosie. Fixed expressions are ready-made phrases and sentences that native speakers frequently use in various contexts. Unlike idioms, which often have figurative meanings, fixed expressions are straightforward and carry precise meanings. Incorporating these expressions into your language repertoire not only enhances your communication skills, but also ensures that you convey your thoughts accurately and confidently. Let's delve into the significance of using fixed expressions and explore some examples to illustrate their importance. For example, the fixed expression, as a matter of fact, is used to emphasize the truth of a statement. It means, in fact, or actually. Another example is by and large, which means generally speaking or for the most part. It is used to make a general statement. Understanding and using these fixed expressions will make your English sound more natural and fluent. Precision in communication. One of the primary advantages of using fixed expressions is the precision they offer in communication. These phrases are well established and convey specific meanings, leaving no room for misinterpretation. For instance, using the phrase to make matters worse clearly indicates a situation worsening. This leaves your listeners with no ambiguity about your message. Enhanced fluency Fluency in any language is not just about speaking fast, but also about speaking smoothly and coherently. Fixed expressions act as linguistic bridges, helping you transition seamlessly between ideas. Employing phrases like, on the other hand, which means considering an alternative perspective or contrasting point, or as a matter of fact, which means introducing a fact that supports your argument guides your speech, making it more fluid and natural. Cultural relevance. Mastering fixed expressions also allows you to integrate seamlessly into English speaking cultures. Native speakers often use these phrases in everyday conversations. So familiarity with these expressions enhances your ability to comprehend and respond appropriately in various social settings. Polished writing. In written communication, fixed expressions lend your text a polished and professional tone. Whether you are writing an essay, report or email, using these expressions can really make a difference. For example, in light of means considering or because of. You might write, in light of recent events, we have decided to postpone the meeting. Confidence boost. Using fixed expressions correctly boosts your confidence, especially when engaging in debates, discussions or public speaking. When you employ these phrases with precision, it demonstrates your mastery of the language, earning you respect among your peers and listeners. Examples of fixed expressions. All right, let's dive into some expressions for starting a conversation. Here are 10 useful phrases. By the way, 
This is used to introduce a new topic or add extra information. It's informal and often used in casual conversations. For example, by the way, have you met my cousin? I was wondering. This phrase is used to politely ask a question or make a request. It's perfect for polite inquiries or requests. For instance, I was wondering if you could help me with my homework. You know what? This expression is great for showing excitement or eagerness to share something. It's informal and used when sharing news or thoughts. For example, you know what? I got the job. As I was saying, use this to return to a topic that was previously discussed. It can be used in both formal and informal discussions. For instance, as I was saying, the meeting is scheduled for tomorrow. I mean, this phrase is used to clarify or emphasize a point. It's casual and often used to emphasize a statement. For example, the movie was all right. I mean, it could have been better. To be honest, this expression is used to introduce an honest opinion or statement. It's informal and used to express sincerity. For instance, to be honest, I didn't enjoy the concert as much as I thought I would. Just a heads up, this phrase is used to give advance notice or warning about something. It's informal and used before sharing important information. For example, just a heads up, the office will be closed on Friday for renovations. Speaking of which, use this to transition to a related topic. It's informal and used during conversations. For instance, speaking of which, have you seen her new car? Correct me if I'm wrong. This phrase invites others to correct a statement if it's inaccurate. It's formal and especially useful in discussions or debates. For example, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't we agree on a different time? Long time no see. This expression is used to express joy upon meeting someone after a long time. It's informal and used when meeting someone you haven't seen in a while. For instance, Hey, long time no see. How have you been? Now, let's move on to expressions for agreement and disagreement. Here are 10 phrases you can use. I see what you mean. This phrase acknowledges understanding of someone else's point. For example, I see what you mean. It's a complicated situation. I couldn't agree more. This expression is used to strongly agree with a statement or opinion. For instance, I couldn't agree more. That movie was fantastic. That's one way to look at it. This phrase acknowledges a different perspective without fully agreeing. For example, well, that's one way to look at it. But I still think we should reconsider. I beg to differ. This expression is used to politely disagree with someone's opinion. For instance, I beg to differ. I think we should focus on other priorities first. Fair point. This phrase acknowledges that someone has made a valid argument. For example, fair point. I can see why you would think that way. I'm afraid I can't agree. This expression is used to firmly disagree with someone's opinion or statement. For instance, I'm afraid I can't agree. The evidence suggests otherwise. I totally disagree. This expression is used to strongly disagree with someone's opinion. For instance, I totally disagree. I think we should stick to the original plan. That's out of the question. This phrase is used to completely reject a suggestion or proposal. For example, that's out of the question. We can't afford to take such a risk. I see your point, but... 
This expression acknowledges someone's perspective before presenting a different viewpoint. For instance, I see your point, but I still think we should consider other options. What do you think I should do? This expression is used when seeking advice or suggestions from others. It's quite informal and typically used when asking for help or guidance. For example, I'm not sure what to do. What do you think I should do in this situation? Do you have any suggestions? This means asking for recommendations or ideas. It can be used in both formal and informal settings when seeking input. For instance, I'm planning a trip. Do you have any suggestions on places to visit? You might want to consider. This phrase is used for offering a polite suggestion or advice. It can be formal or informal, depending on the context. An example would be, you might want to consider talking to your supervisor about this issue. If I were you, this means giving advice by putting oneself in someone else's shoes. It's informal and often used when offering personal advice. For example, if I were you, I would apologize and clear the misunderstanding. I wouldn't recommend it. This is used to advise against a particular action or decision. It can be formal or informal, typically when warning someone. An example could be, I wouldn't recommend it. It's too risky. You'd be better off. This phrase suggests an alternative course of action for someone's benefit. It's informal and often used in friendly advice. For instance, you'd be better off talking to her directly instead of sending an email. Have you thought about? This means asking if someone has considered a particular option or idea. It can be used in both formal and informal settings when discussing possibilities. An example would be, have you thought about taking a break before making a decision? Why don't you? This is used for making a suggestion or recommendation. It's informal and typically used when suggesting an action. For example, why don't you join us for dinner tonight? If I were in your shoes. This expression offers advice based on empathy and understanding of someone's situation. It's informal and used when empathizing and giving advice. An example could be, if I were in your shoes, I would talk to him about how you feel. It might be a good idea too. This phrase suggests a course of action as a good idea. It can be formal or informal depending on the context. For instance, it might be a good idea to get a second opinion before making a decision. Could you please? This is used for making a polite request. It's formal and often used in polite requests. For example, could you please send me the report by the end of the day? Would you mind? This means asking someone politely if they are willing to do something. It's formal and used when making polite requests. An example could be, would you mind closing the window? It's getting chilly. Is it possible for you to? This phrase is used for asking if someone has the capability or opportunity to do something. It's formal and often used when inquiring about possibilities. For instance, is it possible for you to attend the meeting tomorrow? I was hoping you could. This expression conveys a request with a sense of hope or expectation. It can be formal or informal, used in polite requests. An example would be, I was hoping you could help me with my presentation. If you don't mind, this is used for politely asking for permission or making a request. It's formal and often used when seeking permission or making requests. For example, if you don't mind, could I borrow your pen for a moment? Do you think you could? This phrase asks if someone is capable of doing something. It can be formal or informal, used when inquiring about abilities. An example could be, do you think you could finish this task by the end of the day? Would it be possible to? This is used for asking if a particular action is feasible or doable. It's formal and often used when inquiring about possibilities. For instance, would it be possible to reschedule the meeting to tomorrow? 
could I ask you to? This phrase is used for making a polite request for someone to do something. It's formal and often used in polite requests. An example would be, could I ask you to proofread this document for me? I'd appreciate it if you could. This expression conveys gratitude in advance for a requested action. It's formal and often used to express gratitude for a favour. For example, I'd appreciate it if you could forward this email to the team. Thanks for considering my request. This is used to express gratitude for someone's willingness to fulfil a request. It can be formal or informal, showing gratitude for consideration. An example could be, Thanks for considering my request. I really appreciate it. I'm a big fan of. This phrase expresses enthusiasm or preference for something. For example, I'm a big fan of Italian cuisine. I love pasta and pizza. I don't mind. This indicates a lack of preference and shows indifference. An example could be, I don't mind where we eat. You can choose the restaurant. I'm not a big fan of. This phrase expresses a dislike or lack of interest in something. An example would be, I'm not a big fan of horror movies. They scare me too much. I'm really into. This conveys a strong interest or passion for something. For example, I'm really into photography. I love capturing moments. It doesn't matter to me. This indicates a lack of preference and shows flexibility. An example could be, it doesn't matter to me which movie we watch. I'm fine with anything. If you ask me, this phrase introduces an opinion or perspective. For instance, if you ask me, the best time to visit is during the spring season, I suppose. This expression conveys a tentative opinion or assumption. An example could be, I suppose she must be running late. She's usually punctual. I have a feeling that. This phrase expresses a hunch or intuition about something. For instance, I have a feeling that something good is going to happen today. I believe that. This introduces a statement based on personal belief or conviction. An example would be, I believe that honesty is the foundation of strong relationships. These fixed expressions are versatile tools that can enhance your English language skills in various contexts. Mastering them will undoubtedly contribute to your fluency and confidence in both spoken and written English. In conclusion, mastering fixed expressions is indispensable for achieving fluency in advanced level English. These expressions offer precision, enhance fluency, provide cultural insights, polish your writing and boost your confidence. By incorporating these phrases into your speech and writing, you elevate your language skills to a level where you can confidently navigate the complexities of advanced English communication. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Remember, these fixed non-idiomatic expressions are very important. They're the linking devices when we're speaking naturally. They're the linking devices that native speakers use all the time. So they're terribly important. If you'd like to practice these and other lexical chants, then why not subscribe to our Chatterbox Zoom workshops? They're very rewarding and they're great fun. You get the opportunity to talk to me, but also importantly, to other English learners from around the world. And they take place three times a week, three to our sessions per week. And the price is very low. I'll leave the link in the description. Okay, for now, I'll say goodbye. Take care. Stay happy. Bye for now.